Hello and welcome to In Affinity. We're going to look now at the basics of blur. So here we have a, a picture, a close-up of bluebells. And what we see is that the background there, there's more bluebells there, is blurred. And the reason for this being blurred is two reasons. One is because I wanted it to be blurred to provide a nice background for these flowers here. And secondly, because the lens I was using, it had it, the aperture was wide open. It was f, I think f two point eight, and which meant everything else in the background went out of focus. So you can deliberately cause blur to bring other things. Because this is is the one of the key things. The opposite of blur is sharpening. Uh, so flowers here are sharp. The background is blurred. And the eye naturally goes towards sharpened things and away from blurred. So you can deliberately blur things in order to push attention away from that area and towards your subject, which is typically going to be sharp. You can get blur also, rather than just because of the lens, is when something's moving. In this case, this was the, the camera move. I deliberately twitched the camera upwards as I pressed the shutter for kind of an artistic effect. Hmm. Maybe you like it, I don't know. And um, you can also, here's a one taken with a lens called a tilt and shift lens, which is a bit of a kind of weird technical lens in which you kind of bend it a bit. You get very strange blurred and sharped effects. So you can see down here, even up here, there's an area of sharpness, whereas down here, there's not. What you've also got in here, motion sharpness, rather than the moving the, this, because it was taken at a twentieth of a second, the leaves here were moving. So let's zoom in and you can see there the movement, even the lines of movement. And you can deliberately cause that in Affinity Photo. So let's go in close to this and see what we can see about what happens in Blur. And what we see across this bit here, and we'll drag this down here, here we've got a fairly green area. You can see they've got RGB there, and green is 131. It's the highest number, so it's the dominant colour, so you get more green appearing. As we move across here, what you see is as you go up here, reds goes up, green's going up as well, but red's going up even faster. So as you get in here, red and green are now quite close together. Red and green make yellow. And so what we've got here is a, a, a gradient, which is a, you know, effectively a blur all the way down from here down to here. What we can also do with, with blur when we've got it is we can use it to remove noise. If I zoom into this, you can see here that there is a lot of noise. Um, well, it's a lot, it's a little bit. Sometimes it's okay to have it, sometimes you want to get rid of it. So to get rid of it, one of the ways I could do is to use a blur brush. So over here, right click here on this, it's in these, that's the top one. So if I paint on this, see it smudges those noise uh, elements into one another, and so it, it kind of smooths it out. So let's go back up on that. You can also use a Blurs, the most common blur is the Gaussian blur, named after a very nice Mr. Gauss. And if I turn the radius up on this, you can see the blur overall disappearing. So, so I, if I go up there, that's nice and smooth, but look what's happened to the flower there. That's gone a bit funny. And so what you're doing often when you're blurring is you're trying to smooth out noise, but you want to keep things sharp. And one of the ways you can do that so if I go up to here, there's other blurs here. One of the reasons you got them is they have different effects. One called the bilateral blur. If I turn the tolerance right the way down to one and start from the beginning here, as I turn this up, you can see the background beginning to blur, but up here it's still staying pretty sharp. So the bilateral blur is a way of Blurring something where there's noise, but keeping in edges. And I'll say the other very important thing about blur is blur is about edges. It's, it's what happens at an edge. Um, because if you've got a block of colour, all exactly the same, it was all red, you blur it, it still looks exactly the same. 
So in f future videos, we're going to talk a lot more about this. We're also going to get into edges because strangely, you can use blur to detect an edge, which seems rather funny, but it's surprisingly easy. We'll cover that soon. There we go. And thank you very much for watching.